This is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast, hosted by Roman Prokopchuk, bringing you all things digital marketing, tech, business, and motivation. What's stopping you from becoming relentless in all aspects of life? Are you ready to become a digital savage? Let's get into today's episode. Have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? When I was trying to get this podcast off the ground, I had a lot of questions. How do I record an episode? How do I get my show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all the other places people like to listen? How do I make money from my podcast? The answer to every one of these questions is really simple. Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors too, so you can get paid to podcast. Without Anchor, I don't think I would have ever started a podcast. It's so easy to use and I record most of my episodes from my phone. So if you always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it, go to anchor.fm slash start to join me and the diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. I can't wait to hear your podcast. Hey everyone, this is Roman Prokopchuk and this is the Digital Savage Experience Podcast. Today I have with me Jim Miller, Master Consultant in Qubit and author of his ninth book, Hands-On Machine Learning with IBM Watson. Thank you for joining me today. Hey Roman, thanks for having me. My pleasure. So kind of get into how'd you get into your field, the, the current role you're in and some of the experiences you've had. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I've been doing this for, for quite some time. I have actually been fortunate enough to have 37 years of consulting experience around um, building and implementing technology projects. And uh, this allowed me to rather, <clears throat> I think being a consultant uh, gives you a unique experience. So you get to see different business models, different marketplaces, technology used, you know, in different ways, similar or maybe vastly different requirements for the same type of solution and uh, kind of indirect effect to personalities, what kind of people's personalities have on projects and technologies and so on. So over the years, being a consultant, um, I've also been able to work in multiple platforms, um, multiple technologies and so on. So that has been an interesting journey overall. And I guess to say that I got started uh, was um, just working as uh, a business analyst and an opportunity came uh, to become a programmer. And I said, let me give this a try and uh, never look back. Nice. So what's one thing that when you started, you've had, you know, issues with, or it may have been a weakness of yours that you've worked over the years to turn into a strength? Yeah, I think that I would say I've always had uh, the been curious as to why things are done a certain way. Why do we use this tool? How does this system interact with another system? So rather than taking maybe a laser focus on this is exactly what I'm building or doing, or this is how it's always been done. I've always taken the time that sort of broader horizon kind of viewpoint to understand the uh, what's driving the, the, the need, the requirement, the solution. And that led me to discover um, different technologies, different tools and things, understanding, for example, how the database feeds the reporting application and so on. That curiosity started out perhaps as a little bit of a weakness because you sometimes, especially as a consultant, you maybe want to get in do exactly what you're quote, being paid to do and, and be done. But I always took the time to understand the individuals and systems and departments that surrounded my application. And I think over time that kind of grew from a weakness to a strength because now I have that broader sort of architectural um, uh, viewpoint rather than sort of a programmer or executioner type of uh, delivery person. Yeah, I think over time you become more well-rounded and pick up skills that you know, may not necessarily be something that you started off with as well. 
Exactly. So in terms of someone getting into consulting, consulting currently in 2019, since you've had, you know, so many years of experience, what's one kind of thing you can recommend for somebody getting into the field now? Keep learning. Um, one of the things uh, that always helps is that curiosity of not just it's working be done, but why is it working? And that helps um, optimizing existing solutions, um, building new versions, uh, looking for different new ways of doing things. And I think that uh, to have a sustainable career, one can't just be very good at one thing. Uh, Qubit, for example, uh, recommends and urges all their consultants to uh, sort of do a horizontal uh, a gr growing kind of experience and see what the other business uh, areas in, within Qubit are doing. There's an advanced analytics group, there's a, a database group, and so on. And I would highly recommend someone who kind of not always be looking up, but looking from left to right of what somebody else is doing, how other things are working, and what can I learn, and how can I grow in those areas. So what's one thing that you can recommend in terms of some of the subject matter of your current book for somebody getting into Watson, uh, some of the stuff the book focuses on and who kind of the target audience or the target readership is for it? Yes, uh, good question. So um, as you mentioned, I've written nine books, um, I've had nine books published and those books almost all grew out of the wanting to discover new areas um, of interest, new technologies, big data being one, visualization is another area that um, interests me. Um, having, I think, a little bit of an artsy, creative background, I, I like to take <clears throat> the ones and zeros and see how it can be presented better to tell the story with, through visualization. But the Watson book started out back in 2015 when um, it started out as Watson Analytics and working in an analytics uh, role with uh, then TM1, now Planning Analytics, I wanted to see what the next step was. So rather than just continue to do sort of the same um, fundamental approach to forecasting and budgeting, what's next? And Watson perhaps would be that. Uh, so I started investigating what was then Watson Analytics, which grew into now Watson Studio, the Watson Cloud Platform. In this book, I wanted to try to bridge the gap from sort of a data developer or analytic uh, developer to get more in, involved in the advanced analytics side. What does Watson Studio do to you, do for you? Uh, how can you ramp up quicker? Is it difficult? Do you have to be a data scientist uh, to be productive? And by the way, no, you don't. Um, so that, those were the kinds of needs and interests that, that drove the idea for the book. So since this is your ninth book, and obviously you started with, you know, there had to be a starting point for the first one. Mm -hmm. How have you kind of grown as an author? What is your process? And what can you recommend to someone that's thinking about writing a book in any subject area or even something in terms of analytics specifically? Sure. So a couple of things. <clears throat> I've always been one to um, be a blank page type of guy uh, in, in programming, um, in consulting, in business in general. You always hear about someone who maybe has the technology down, the syntax down, but really needs a straw man or a template to get going. And then there's blank page people who um, can get started from nothing. And I've always been that type of individual. I love to be the guy who draws the first line or writes the first word. So that helps a lot with a book. But if you're thinking about writing a book, it is a process. And <clears throat> although, <clears throat> excuse me, although I've always envisioned writing that great American novel, sitting by the fire, my glass of wine um, kind of thing, it's not that romantic of a, of a concept, really. There's, you know, creating um, a rough outline, uh, what, what the general idea is, how that idea breaks down over chapters. If you're working with a publisher, they're going to want to know um, what each chapter is going to focus on, what the reader is going to get out of each chapter, how many pages, and so on. So you really need to have a lot of pre-thought and rough that out into a template that you can then start to fill in the gaps. What made you want, or what got you into writing your first book? So what, you know, what are the steps, or what made you take the leap in creating your first book? <clears throat> well, I've always been interested in creativity and writing 
and always kind of thought about uh, perhaps writing a book. Uh, a publisher initially approached me, given my experience with TM1, the certifications that I hold, and asked if I would be interested in writing uh, a certification guide for TM1 back, I think it was version 10. And I jumped at the chance to get started to actually work with the publisher and see how that process works. Uh, that was a tough first book, uh, first task. It was more about understanding what's expected of you as an author. Once that book was published, and that book was more of a how-to, facts and figures kind of thing, it drove my interest into <clears throat> going beyond that into more philosophy of uh, concepts of um, delivering a message and then showing how to use a tool or technology to solve for that. So in terms of you've been in your you know, career, career path for a large number of years, what's motivated you to succeed over the years and maintain that kind of drive to become better and grow at your craft? So in terms of motivation, what's been a motivation for you over the years and continuously have been a motivation based on the amount of years you've been in your career? So keeping motivated to, you know, strive and grow into, you know, where you are now as a uh, master consultant. Well, again, I've always been curious of how can I do this better uh, or differently? I've always been a bit of a nonconformist uh, you know, if things have been successfully done a certain way for so long, why is there another solution, another angle? That's that's always kind of been inbred in me. Um, so so that kind of drives me. But I also like to teach. Um, it's what's really exciting when you <clears throat> you're on a, a technology project and you go through the whole process of understanding, drawing out the, the customer's requirements and then making recommendations for how the solution will be designed and delivered. And then ultimately when you roll it out and then you sort of mentor and teach the end user how to use it and they see the value in what you've done, that's pretty exciting to me. So always looking to be, uh, be in a position where I can speak with authority of saying, yes, I've done this, this is a, uh, the best practice kind of approach. And, and that kind of thing really turns me on, keeps me interested and motivated to continue to grow and get better at what I do. Nice. That's awesome. And obviously you're contributing to projects and different compas companies and affecting their bottom line and affecting obviously their employees in terms of the amount of employees they can retain or get new employees and obviously growing other businesses through, you know, what you're offering. So you have that kind of added bonus as well. Very much. So in terms of teaching, you mentioned teaching, you do have a webinar with Qubit coming up in May. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> I'd like to mention that again, starting out, I've actually authored three books on the general Watson topic. The first one was sort of a general how-to with Watson analytics, uh, a very sort of specific kind of approach. The next book was a list of projects. Uh, these were sort of conceptual use case projects that uh, I thought were very much uh, industry focused. And then finally, the, the latest book that just was published last month, uh, Machine Learning with Watson Studio and Watson Cloud. Um, that book, we went through and um, gave a little bit of background of how Studio and Cloud works, but then also solved very specific uh, uh, projects uh, using the services available on the Watson Cloud. And so through that, we took one of the chapters, one of the projects that uh, we did in the book, and we're going to present a sort of a step-by-step -step, um, visual recognition service project to sort of, you know, get your feet wet. This is how easy it is to get started, um, Q&A kind of thing, just to kind of promote the whole concept that, um, you know, how it works and, and how to get started and, and how we can help anyone who's interested in, in that field. Awesome. And what's kind of the, um, the target audience for that webinar? Uh, anyone in the space, anyone looking to learn? Yeah, so it can be a business user who's thinking about how machine learning uh, might be used. Uh, someone who just have heard about Watson Studio, a developer um, who's maybe using a set of open source uh, technologies and tools and wants to see what Watson Studio might do for them. So 
Um, it's, it's pretty wide open. You don't have to be a technical expert, um, just someone who uh, is interested in the concepts and, and what Watson can do. That's awesome. So what's one uh, piece of advice you can leave with the audience, either professional or personal, whatever you like? I would say uh, keep growing, uh, keep exploring. Uh, a lot of my, um, when I do have uh, free time, it's it's going out to specific websites, reading articles on LinkedIn, um, also on projects and things where you come across different uh, technologies and solutions and tools to, to investigate them. There's a whole list of trial software and packages, open source things. Bring, go ahead and you know download them, ex- experiment, explore, and also don't accept what the general media is saying. They might a lot of folks will. I've heard that. Predictive analytics, machine learning is too complicated for a business user or a business developer to understand and be productive with. But I think Watson sort of takes some of that away. And so if you kind of been turned off from the whole Watson, it's how's that fit my business? You might, you might potentially be losing out on an insight or an opportunity to make things better. That's, that's great advice. So in terms of anything else you want to mention to the audience, anywhere they can find you online, anything else you have coming up? Yeah, so we, uh, if you go to Amazon where, and search my name or the, the book title, you'll, you'll find all the nine books. There's an author's page there for James D. Miller, uh, which I'm trying to maintain with all the latest updates and book signings and different webinars um, I'll be doing. Also on LinkedIn and Twitter at James D. Miller. And um, absolutely um, love feedback, good or bad. It's um, it drives you drives me to investigate how to how to do a better job or if someone thinks there's a better way of doing things. Um, love to hear about that. So I'm open to any conversation, email, tweet, or whatever. Awesome. Well, I appreciate you jumping on today, and thank you for your time. Thank you. Loved it. This podcast has been brought to you by Nova Zora Digital. Find out how Nova Zora Digital can help your company grow online. Learn more at NovaZoraDigital.com. Until next time, all you digital savages.